everybody, it's Gordon with EXO here at Icon Vehicle Dynamics today to install a new three inch Icon lift on Matt's new Sasquatch Bronco. And we're gonna show you step by step on how to do it. One of the things that's interesting about the Bronco as opposed to a lot of other vehicles out there is it's IFS in the front and solid axle in the back with links, which is common with a lot of other vehicles. But this vehicle is different because it's got a full coilover strut assembly from the factory front and rear. So on a lot of other vehicles where you have separate coil and a separate shock, the Bronco is integrated both front and back. So we are treating the rear kind of like you treat the IFS front, but with some different parameters to maximize the droop and prevent tires from rubbing. So the kit consists of um, a lift spacer that goes in two different parts of the strut coilover assembly, a top load spacer and a spring preload spacer. Um, the reason that we do a combination of both is one is getting you um, a new bump position to make sure that 37 is clear and part of the lift and the rest is getting um, the rest of the lift without overextending the rest of the suspension. So this is the safest way to do it, is by doing partial top load and partial preload spacer. So this, these are the rear top load spacers. These are the front top load spacers. The fronts are shorter because it's independent suspension. So just a little bit of change here is gonna make a lot more change at the wheel. So that's why the spacers are different front to rear, but we end up with the same amount of lift when we're all done. Because there's so many different configurations from the factory, where, um, which edition you have, as well as whether or not you have Sasquatch or not, um, there's a lot of different factory shocks that are available. So we made this kit so it's universal. A non-Sasquatch is gonna use all these parts, but for this Sasquatch install, we're not gonna use one set of preload spacers because that coil is already lo longer and taller because it's a Sasquatch. So we don't need these for this truck. Start by removing the front wheels from the vehicle. Steps one and two must be performed simultaneously. Step two, disconnect sway bar links from both lower control arms and move sway bar links up and out of the way once disconnected. Next, remove the sway bar skid plate to gain access to the sway bar brackets. Now, we remove one side of the sway bar from the frame to gain access to the lower control arm bolts. We found you can slide the mount to the rear stud, providing support while you work on the next step. Support the lower control arm and remove the cam bolts to free the lower control arm from the frame. Step six, remove the three 50 millimeter nuts from the top of the coilover bucket. Next, remove the two 18 millimeter nuts from the bottom of the coilover. Once unbolted, Remove the coilover from the vehicle. So we want to maintain the orientation of the spring to the shock to make sure that the angle of the top plate isn't put into a bind. So when we take it apart, we want to make sure we put it back together this way. And we have to mark it because we're going to put the top plate on 180 degrees um, opposite of the way it is so that the clearance of the old studs and the spacer um, all nest together correctly. On the body of the board. Perfect. Once it's in the compressor and, and held with a lot of the tension, it's nice to get this a little bit loose before you relieve all the tension. Make sure you don't come off the end here because that's when things explode. <laughs> but if you compress the spring all the way and then try and loosen it, then the whole shock starts to turn. So I just broke it loose. Then we can compress it the rest of the way. So Dylan, this is able to be done in your driveway with the tool that you guys recommend in the instructions, correct? Correct. Is that tool available through Icon or? Well, there's a lot of varieties of spring compressors out there. You know, there's the, um, the rod with the two hooks. Those are not that recommended. Um, the ones that we show in the pictures in the instruction, that, that um, spring compressor is about 140 bucks from Amazon. Okay. 
floor studs from the shock using press or a hammer. We found the edge of a vise works great. With the factory upper mount removed, remove the rubber isolator and install it onto the preload spacer. Remove the factory roll pin from the upper coilover assembly. Next, place the spacer onto the upper coilover assembly, then mark the factory studs for cutting. Cut the marked area off the studs. We recommend lightly sanding the edge of the newly cut bolts to make nut re-engagement easier. Now that we've trimmed the studs, we can confirm that it's below the surface of the spacer so that the stud doesn't hit the coil bucket up in the vehicle. Without the coil on, you can see that we've now created a new bolt pattern that's 180 degrees off from the old one. So originally we had one of these studs straight backwards in line with the reservoir. Um, but now that we've reversed the bolt pattern, we need to put this 180 degrees so one of our new holes is in line with the shock in its original orientation so that it goes back in the bolt pattern in the bucket of the vehicle. So this is the mark that I put on it before and I reorientated it with the one down here. Okay. And then this is when we want to get our orientation of the upper. So if you look at our original mark, which is here, we're going to go 180 degrees. You'll notice that this stud, our old stud in the old mark location was lined up with the reservoir. Um, and we're going to go 180 degrees, so our new hole is lined up with the reservoir. So to explain why we do this um, partial top load, partial preload, if we made all this distance up on just the top load spacer, then we would be overextending the suspension. It would make the new distance that used to be from here to the end, which is now here, if we did it all here, it'd be even that much longer, and it would overextend the su suspension, damage your CVs, upper ball joints, tie rods, etc. But we want to get a little bit more lift. We also want to um, prevent larger tires from rubbing. So this dimension here is also calculated so that the bump stop engages a little sooner and stops the wheel before fender collision with 37s. Step 14, reinstall the completed coilover into the upper coil bucket using supplied hardware, torqued to 35 foot-pounds. Use supplied 716's hardware to secure lower shock bar pin to lower arm, torqued to 50 foot-pounds. Step 16, install lower control arm back into frame mounts. Leave the factory bolts snug, do not tighten until vehicle is back on its own weight. Finally, install the sway bar back onto the frame. Then repeat all these steps on the other side. Step one, remove rear wheels from the vehicle. Now remove the fender flares by turning the quarter turn fasteners counterclockwise, then pulling fender straight out from vehicle. This here is your, your lever lock cam, but they've got some additional clips here, which are your more traditional body clips. And you can leave these in and it'll still snap in. Um, if you're gonna do it a lot, these will wear out over time, but you'll always have these quarter turns. So it's harder the first time you're saying. Yeah, the first time pulling it off is a little stickier because these are brand new clips. Right. So screw locations. Here. And then there's one here that you can't get a screwdriver on, so you have to use a, a small, I believe it's six millimeter wrench, because okay. you can't get at that one. So right here in the corner, all three. Yeah. And then and the rest of clips. them are these plastic clips, which you can kind of loosen with a Phillips, but if you push too hard, they just strip in you, so you have to do it lightly with a smaller Phillips. Yes. Next, support the rear axle housing with a jack, just enough to hold it in place at full droop. We support the axle with the jack so that we can lower it in a controlled manner, so we are careful not to overextend brake lines 
and some other wiring that's under there. Step five, remove the three upper 15 millimeter shock nuts. Next, remove the lower shock bolt. We still need to remove this pin. And then this one has enough clearance for the nuts, so we don't need to cut the nuts off on this one. But we still do, do need to rotate the upper mount 180 degrees so the new bolt pattern lines up. So one stud is in line with the reservoir now instead of one stud opposite the reservoir. With the rear spacer installed, reinstall the coilover into the upper rear coil bucket using supplied hardware. Install the lower shock mount using factory hardware. You may have to move the axle around a bit up or down to get the bolt to fit. Finally, reinstall fender liner and fender flare. Okay, everything's back together. Um, shocks are in, wheel well liners are in. The last thing that we do is once it's on the ground, there's a couple bolts that get tightened at right height on the ground. That's a wrap, we're all done here for the day. The truck sits level within about an eighth of an inch from front to back. You and a French bill get this done in about three to four hours in the driveway taking it tomorrow to get it aligned and then down to Baja in a week and a half. Hope to see you guys in the trail.